Hello everyone. Today's video is the full disassembly of the lower frame of the CZ P10F and that is also good for the other P10 series. This will not include the magazine release which will be on a separate video. Alright, let's start. Let's remove the slide. And you need to remove some pins. It is better when dealing with European to have metric punches, but not everybody has them and I do not as well, but some punches will fit fine. I highly suggest you get some roll pins. You see the difference between roll pin at the end and no roll pin. This roll pin will fit perfectly inside that pin here without damaging anything. It helps push the pin. As well, on the CZ P10, the first time you remove any pin, it is a little bit tight. The second, third time, and so on after that will be smoother. It is not going to become very loose at all. It just is easier. First time it's very tight. So to go back to punches, those two roll pin punches you are going to use, the small one is a 332 for those two pins, and the larger one is a 1 8 for that one and for that pin here anything that really fits and to start disassembling the lower frame you need to remove the what we call the disassembly plate there is a spring underneath watch out it's under high pressure I already lost it and I got lucky to find everything you don't need any tool you just push on it you will compress the spring push on the side here and you can slide it gently. Now remember when you push on it it will create pressure on the spring. So now I go on the other side and pull on it and it will come out. If you are not confident you can reverse it and pull on it and the spring and the block will come on the table here. That's it. And to go fish for it you will need some pliers. Or you can do this. There we go. And here are the springs and the retainer that we are going to put aside. Let's remove this block. I have this block here. It works, but Roll of tape is really better. This is not, uh, never lock your gun in position like a good roll of tape. So, that's it. Some packing tape. My 1 8 roll pin punch. Hammer, and there we go. And finally pushing that pin out. You don't have to force anything. The only spring you have is this one, which is going to stay in place. Let's remove the uh, side lock and the spring. That's it for that. And this block can put into hoppies and you can use a toothbrush to clean it. That's a different video. Now we want the back assembly. This gun is very simple, very few parts. You just have pins to remove, and I'm so used to my Steyr L9, which had no pins. This is pretty convenient. All right, now I'm using my 332 punch. One pin. And those two, by the way, are the same size. See, they're identical. The full pin that retain the middle part of the block and the first pin are different sizes. All right, let's move on. No spring here to worry about. And I can remove the entire assembly. Now to remove 
this assembly here, you just have to push that pin here. There we go. Done. Remove the pin, and you have that block, the spring at the end, and that is it. Pretty simple and easy to put back together. This gun is pretty good. Let's go back to the trigger assembly. Uh, I don't suggest you remove the trigger unless you want to replace it. Those springs here can be easily removed. Let's see easily. Should come out easily. Normally they do. Let's go with the other one. I will have more luck. Oh, I took it into the wrong direction. That's why. There you go. That's it. Easy clean. Very easy to clean. And you can polish that part here that meets this little one here. A nice area to polish. That's it. It's now time to rebuild the trigger assembly. The back part goes this way. This is the top of the gun. So the trigger assembly goes this way. It's too easy to start rebuilding it this way. So build it the way you see it. The easier way to put those little spring here, I mean, it's, it's easy either way, but if you hook them up toward you on this side, and on the outside here. Two, four, there we go. Now you're going to turn everything over, and to put the springs inside the block, or the sear and go fish with that pin here. You want to catch the two springs. Nothing very hard. One down, and then the other one. No, I think I missed it. There we go. Two springs in. And we're going to incorporate that block here with the spring. It's nice to have a little bit of oil or grease on it. And remember, here is where the trigger rub into. Let's push it in, remove the trigger assembly, and that's it. We're in. And that's the part to smooth out. Now we can put it back into the frame. Oh, and here you have the trigger assembly, which I will show how to remove into another video. Now it is time to put back everything. The sear, the trigger assembly. Let's put the trigger first in its hole and then the block, but it won't go very far without releasing the pressure here. Put back those pins. This one will go very smoothly. This one will be harder. But every gun is a bit different. A little bit in recess. A bit more. Good. And this one that is harder. Now you can see, see light through the hole, okay. Once you put the block there, it is flush. Now you might want to verify before you force a pin through it. You can do this, but it might harm a little bit the end of the pin. I suggest you take the roll pin, punch. In recess, and this is a bit too much on this side. And we'll call it good. Now it's time to reinstall the front block and the slide lock. You can 
back on its pins. Pull. Easy. The spring here needs to go into this cutout here. And I hold everything in it once I pushed it. It can stay in place on its own, but I like to hold it until I put the spring in its home. And it's going to push the slide lock down. Now push it into place, into position. With the spring in place, make sure of the spring, and push it down. All right, now I'm going to start with that pin here to hold everything together. And that is the one that has a hole in the center. And remember, I use the larger one inch punch on this one. For the other one, I use a punch to put everything together because, as you can see, this one is not all in one hole. So I find a hole. There you go. Playing with the trigger. Yeah, I'm in. And I want the pin to go this way because you have the spring on that side and you don't want the spring to catch this side here you want to catch the other one which you can do a reverse but it will annoy you so you put a punch and let's see if we can use a bigger punch maybe yep 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 no okay we'll use a small one And we'll start the pin with some pressure on the punch. The pin comes into position and we're good. All we are missing now is the slide release latch. latch. So we need to put in that little part, remember? Be careful, it will fly away. You need a pair of plier to put it into position right there into its home push it down the slide catch goes this way it goes into the back I just put it in in an angle and apply force on the spring it and everything is in the lower frame let's try the slide let's see that trigger is amazing it was good at first it had a little bit of greediness right here but by removing the firing pin block it's oh, better and then some polishing which usually I don't do it but I wanted to try it and oh Beautiful. Beautiful trigger. And the last thing to remove is the back strap here in case you want to replace it. I'm using a 564 ball punch. small I'm going to keep but if you let's say want to put the large one that hole in the bottom this hole is mainly for Europeans they put a, a rope that goes to that belt this way if someone steal their gun they cannot run anywhere they will have to take the cup with them but deal <laughs> there we go and then 
look like the pin, which I'm going to do with the small. I have small hands, so that's what I am using. Don't need the tip. Punch again. And this is inside and beautiful. Well this is it for the full lower frame disassembly. Until next time, see you guys.